The following programme is recommended for those 16 and over as it contains sporting violence, possible bad language and flashing imagery. Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome. From the four corners of the world, the four corners of this ring, the fight starts now! So let's go. Well, we're just a, a few days on from our show in Liverpool. We're keeping it in the north. We're in Newcastle this week, where on Saturday night we'll be showcasing a crop of bright, up-and-coming young talents at the Utilita Arena on Saturday night live uh, on the zone. No Eddie Hearn today for the press conference. He's out in Mexico. Of course, the announcement uh, of Canelo Alvarez defending his uh, undisputed super middleweight titles against John Ryder, Guadalajara, May the 6th, live uh, on the zone as well. Massive opportunity for your uh, stable mate, John, but it does mean that you and I have got a little sofa day hosting the presser. God, we're winging this, aren't we? We're doing all right, aren't we? We, we are king blaggers. We are. Uh, top of the bill, as you will know, Saturday night, Cyrus Pattinson um, in his first proper domestic test at 147 pounds against the former British uh, and Commonwealth champion Welshman Chris Jenkins. We've got nine uh, fights total on Saturday night. We're going to be speaking to uh, a, lo a load of the fighters as part of our undercard press conference this afternoon. Um, we're going to be taking the fighters in groups uh, and our first group, very welcome, uh, very pleased to welcome Maisie Rose Courtney uh, and Muhammad Ali. I have to say, you're probably the hardest fighter I've ever had to Google um, and I'm glad I had Sam Jones and Dave Culver on the end of the phone. Um, you're a three-time national champion, um, a long way to go in this sport, 18 years of age. Tell us a little bit about your, your journey and how you started out in boxing. Well, when I was younger, I was a little chubby kid. Um, my dad took me to the boxing gym. Obviously, I lost a lot of weight when I was only 10 years old. Um, and then the coach said to me, you might as well start boxing. And I've loved it since then. And I've never stopped training and stopped fighting since then. I've always wanted to do it. You've recently started working with Dave Colwell. There's some very young, hungry fighters uh, in that gym, some great contenders. Hopey Price, of course, we'll see on the main show as well. Um, what have you learned from being in that environment in, in these first couple of months? I mean, look, you've got some top, top level lads and you, you're just, you're learning how the way of boxing is. You know what I mean? Every skill, the way the fights go, the way the life is, the life of a boxer, you're just learning how to do it and it's, it's brilliant. Do you feel any pressure? It might be a silly question this, but any pressure carrying that name, if you like? No, nah, not at all. I mean, when I was amateur, I had that name. I mean, I, it, I, since I was born, I've had the name. Um, I don't feel no pressure towards it. You know what I mean? He's the legend himself. He created it. I mean, whatever God's got planned for me, that's it. That'll happen. You're managed by uh, Sam Jones, another man who's got a plan for you. I know him very well. He's relentless in backing his fighters. How important has he been in helping you set up this opportunity with match and boxing and, and getting you set up as a professional? I mean, he's been brilliant. You know what I mean? He managed to get me, uh, he's helped me through the way, through turning pro, everything like that. Um, you know what I mean? Got me the, uh, the agreement, you know what I mean? The match rooms, uh, signing and stuff like that. And then obviously now I'm fighting, 18th March. It's been brilliant. Yeah. Um, Sean Jackson, your debut opponent. The fight's been agreed at £124. Where do you think we're going to see you settle over the next couple of years? 122, 118, what do you think? I mean, whatever my, whatever's planned, you know what I mean? We'll see how it goes. I mean, we we'll talk about this fight first and then we'll plan in the future. Good Prediction? Stuff. God willing, inshallah, knockout. Yeah. Inshallah. Uh, that's Muhammad Ali uh, in against Sean Jackson from uh, Manchester to open the show on Before the Bell uh, Saturday. Those ring walks are scheduled for 4.50 for those of you watching at home. Um, for those of you attending, doors will be opening uh, at the arena at half past four. Um, second on the bill in her professional uh, fight, second professional fight, London's Maisie Rose Courtney. Uh, she's in against Bukra El Caisi uh, from Catalonia in Spain. Uh, Maisie, I remember speaking to you in your uh, fight week debut uh, and you said to me on the live float what does that mean i said well it could mean absolutely anything turns out you ended up being chief support for the greatest female fighter of all time at wembley arena in front of about seven thousand people probably a good thing you didn't have time to overthink that you would have got a call up i guess 15 20 minutes notice how do you reflect on uh, an amazing experience for your debut um it was nuts for me. i didn't even have time to think about it nor time to warm up really do you know what i mean it's like mm. come upstairs he was like right i've got five minutes 
got my gloves on, Tony was all right, we've got to go now. Boss, straight out. And yeah, do you know what? Afterwards, that's when it sunk in a little bit, do you know what I mean? Like, professional debut, walking out to like 7,000 people. Yeah. Like, it's a little bit scary. But yeah, I've done it. I think I did well. I wanted to do a little bit better, obviously, do you know what I mean? I wanted to knock her out, but. Yeah, well, of course. I know you were impressed with what you saw, weren't you? I mean, I, I, just, I can't even get that in my head to, you know, fight at, in that position. I mean, how many people watched your debut? I don't know, half a dozen? Yeah. <laughs> you know, <laughs> at, best, at yeah. best. But, I mean, it must give you the world of confidence there. I mean, also, what a box ticked as well. One of your idols on their undercard just before. But the confidence it must give you moving forward. You must be thrilled. Yeah, I'm very lucky to say that I've had that like experience happened like really quickly like well it's my first fight do you know what i mean but yeah no it was proper scary i remember i looked out and i saw one of my best mates standing there and i was Whoa. I, I ain't looking around do you know what i mean i ain't looking around because i've just gotta go out there put my head down and you're um for for those who might have not seen Maisie, she's a hard case she really is mm. and you've had some good sparring and one of the spars that i was lucky lucky enough to see was when you was uh, in there with sky nicholson Tell me about some of the spars you've had. Um, I've been beat up a lot. <laughs> <laughs> we all have, mate. <laughs> no, I think I always spar girls that are a little bit heavier than me, do you know what I mean? A little bit more experienced, and thanks to Kevin, Tony down the gym, they know what they're doing with me. So, get beat up, and yeah, hopefully on the night I don't get beat up, but yeah, we'll see. Because you're, you're naturally a pressure fighter. Is, is that something Kev wants to encourage? Does he want you to express who you are? You have to sometimes rein you back a little bit. The thing is, when I used to box for reps and I weren't, I never boxed like I used to box in the back foot, like dancing and all of that, like fancy stuff. So with Kev, it's like changed. I had to do like a whole process of it. Do you know what I mean? Like pushing forward on my front foot, moving my head, making sure I'm just not eating all the jabs. Do you know what I mean? So yeah, we'll see. It's um, some quite good prospects around you. Not many at your, your weight. You've got Nicola Hopewell, Chloe Watson, and up at Superfly, got Emma Dolan, Shannon Ryan. Um, who beat your opponent at the end of last year. Would you quite like to have a, a decent domestic rivalry at some point? I get the sense that we might see a little bit more of you. Yeah, of course. Yeah, I wouldn't say no. I'll have a nudge, not, but... <laughs> <laughs> I've only had one fight. I don't want to start calling people out, but... But you will. But I will, will. If, it, if it comes down to it. But, yeah, if the time's right, then I'll take it. Yeah. Good stuff. What will be, will be. Well, all, all the best for, for Saturday. Maisie Rose takes on uh, Bukhara El Kaisi over four rounds uh, on before the bell. Those are our first two fights. Uh, Mohammed, Maisie Rose, thank you very much. All Good the best. Time. Thank you. So we'll let these two uh, make their way uh, off stage. Boxing on the Zone, presented by William Hill. Deliveroo presents Decision Time. You want everything. But what's it going to be this time? Pizza. Yes. I love you. Scrap that. Burger's in town. Come and dance, you delicious meaty beauty. Chicken. Go on, have a think bite. Rain down, you crisp. Oh. Tim's ordered noodles. Decision made. Order now. Deliveroo. Food, we get it. That is squirrels. Who, but he's um, <laughs> he know he knows his boxing, that's for sure. Uh, right, I think we're ready to, to rock and roll with the next three. Afternoon, gentlemen. Good to see you all. Um, one of Steve Wood's fighters will be up third on the bill. 22-year-old uh, lightweight from the northeast. He's been boxing uh, since you were, you were eight years old, I think. Is that is that correct? Yeah, Adam Riker. Yeah, Adam Riker. Good to good to finally meet you. Um, from the Tenacity Boxing Gym here in the North East under the guidance of John Stubbs uh, and Anthony Kelly. Um, you made your debut on one of the Sourland shows. You were actually in the same position as Maisie Rose um, where you were, I think, the live float. Uh, and you got there about half past four and you ended up boxing around midnight. And unfortunately, that is the risk that you take when you agree to be the float, isn't it? Yeah, well, um, we, we were the first at the arena because we had a couple on the undercard and stuff. And um, I was the first one with my hands wrapped. Um, and then we didn't end up walking in the ring till about quarter to 12. Um, I think it was after 12 by the time we got out. It was a long night to say the least, but it was all good experience. Yeah, of course it is. Uh, and you'll, you'll be glad to know you're boxing at a reasonable time on, on Saturday. I think you're scheduled to, to ring walk at 20 to 6. So you should be done and dusted by 7 and you can enjoy the rest of the evening. Um, I know you've been sparring at Still City Gym with Jordan Flynn. Uh, and congratulations to Grant Smith on his uh, awards trainer of the year. Um, and Flynn fought your opponent, um, Yafius Foyou. Have you had a look at him? What, what do you make of the guy you're going to be in with Saturday? I actually haven't had too much to look at him. Um, I leave that to my coaches, Anthony John. Um, I've, I mean, I've seen like the size of him and what he looks like and stuff like that, but 
I spoke to um, Jordan a bit about him, but as I say, I'll box whoever I get put in front of. Um, I leave the the looking at the like looking at the opponent down at me coaches. Do you know what I mean? You um you're a local lad, and like Chris said, your your debut was at the arena. How buzzing are you that it's back there in front of your adoring fans? Oh, over the moon. I mean, since I started boxing at seven, eight year old, you dream of being at um, at the arena, and that's where you want to be on. Do you know what I mean, I've dedicated my full life to boxing, and who wouldn't want to be on these shows? And thankfully, in my second fight, it's my second time at the arena, selling a good few tickets and getting all my friends, all my family, and people just talking about it. That's all I want to be involved in. Do you know what I mean? Um, I, I know you boxed 134 pounds your debut. This one's been agreed at 135. You're going to stick a lightweight. Could you make super feather? Um, it's something we need to look at going forward. Um, nutritionist on board, and um, I mean, I'm only 22. I'm only young. As I as I might grow through the weights quite quick, I might stay around. I don't know, but we we'll just focus at one fight at a time and one three five is where I'm going to be out on Saturday and I'm feeling good and feeling confident and ready to put on the show. Well, some good domestic fighters in and around area level at your weight. Like Johnny Phillips who always brings a good fight. Ishmael Ellis, Lee Haskins, son Anton who I think is about 6-0. and oh, Justin Newell, Alfie Price as well. Um, and I know Steve Wood likes to match you tough. Ben Marksby of course will, will tell you that. He knew that in the first year. Are you expecting to be matched tough in the next sort of year, 18 months? Do you want to be matched tough? Yeah, definitely. I mean, I think every prospect will agree when somebody comes to win you'll perform better i want to be in with the other prospects and other undefeated fighters because that'll initially bring out like the, the best version of myself do you know what i mean in the long run it'll suit us down the ground good man um adam record all the best for saturday we'll see you at the way in tomorrow thanks for thanks, thanks for talking to us um fourth and final fight on our pre-broadcast segment uh, and a step up for an eight-time national champion uh, commonwealth and european youth gold medalist uh, Mark Dickinson in against a very good domestic fighter in Ben Ridings. Mark, welcome back. Um, a little bit has changed since we last spoke. You had a great start under Ben Davison and his team, but I know relocating is not always ideal for fighters, and, and home was calling you. You're back with Graham Rutherford and, and all your old boys at Berkeley. How's, how's the last few months been? Um, yeah, back at Berkeley, back at home, and um, just happy, relaxed and confident going into the fight. Um, just can't wait to show now uh, the different side of boxing that I've got. Now I'm back at Berkeley and um, just show it on Saturday night and um, put a good performance on. We, um, we, we had a chat earlier. Just tell the, the viewers out there how much it means to you and, and the rest of the guys to belong to Berkeley and represent that, represent that club. Yeah, yeah, it means a lot to me. And uh, I wear the Berkeley boys there, uh, tracks it with pride. And um, we used to walk about the shores and that as kids and that proud to be from Berkeley and um, you know, Berkeley boys are taking over. And, and shout out to, to Graham Rutherford as well. What a week. Yeah, what a week. What, what a soldier, by the way. Yeah. Go on, Graham. <laughs> Go on, Graham. Yeah. And um, play. I just wanted to, to, to hear for, from yourself and Callum how much he means to you as individuals, but what he does for the club as well. Without the club, with, I mean, without the club, without Graham, um, I don't think Bertley would have the name that it's got. Well, it definitely wouldn't. Um, it's all down to him. He's very dedicated. Gives up, uh, gives up a lot of his own time and that, and puts it into us. And um, he's trained me from being six year old. He's been like a second father figure in my life, and um, not just a good boxing coach, but a good life coach as well. And he's, um, he's got my mind in the right place for where I need to be in for Saturday night. He ain't done a bad job, has he? No, done a very good job indeed. I think consensus is that it's the, the top amateur club in the country and you boys are of course the, the latest product uh, of it. Just a quick word on your opponent, Ben Ridings from Berry, very good fight, a great value for, for money, went eight rounds with Tom Whitaker Hart up at 175, got stopped by Callum Simpson for the central area at 168, but Simpson massive in that fight and uh, Whitaker Hart's a huge uh, light heavyweight uh, as well. He's down at a much more natural size for him, I, I feel for you it's probably going to bring the best out of you having an opponent that is going to sling a few back at you and, and, try and try and win this fight. Yeah, he seems like a game enough lad. Um, seems like it'll come to fight, but um, I'm there to show that there's different levels in boxing, and I'm a few levels above Ben Ridens on Saturday night. Mm. Uh, and, and finally, you've obviously known these boys a long time, Cyrus as well. How proud are you, Pat, to to be to be sharing this bill in the northeast? No, definitely. We've talked about these nights for years, being on the GB squad, being in Berkeley training together, and um, to finally have it now, the matchroom show in the northeast, and us all fighting on the card together, it's a dream come true. Yeah, um, Mark, good luck. Mark Dickinson and Ben Ridings will close proceedings on our pre-broadcast segment before the bell. That one scheduled uh, eight rounds, roughly 6.15 uh, on Saturday. I'll be at the commentary desk with uh, Darren and Barry Jones doing a couple of fights each. Chev Clark, I think, is going to be joining us too, so that should be really, really good fun. Do join us uh, if you're going to be watching at home. 7 p.m. The show starts uh, on the zone. Another one of the Berkeley boys sitting in between uh, these two lads. Uh, Callum French, two-time ABA champion, double European medalist. Um, 
one of the best circuit fighters around in, in Jordan Ellison in front of you on Saturday night. Callum, welcome back. It's been a long time since you fought at home. Um, 2018, in fact, the WSB, right in your backyard of, of Gateshead. It's been a, been a long time since you've been back here. How does it feel to be, to be home? Oh, it's brilliant to be back. Um, obviously, boxing on GB all around the world, boxing in these Eastern European countries, these, uh, these sports halls all over the world. It was uh, nice to come home in 2018 to the Gateshead Leisure Centre and do it in front of uh, my friends and my family. So this is just another step up. Um, do it in front of the arena, where I've always dreamed of doing it, um, since I've been nine years old, since I laced on the gloves. You had um, a good eight rounds out last time against Taylor. A learning fight, you could say. But you're enjoying the journey, aren't you? Definitely loving it. Um, this is what it's all about at this stage of my career, getting these, uh, getting these, um, these experiences in. Uh, no point in going in and blasting, um, blasting journeymen out. You want um, durable opponents in front of you who are going to take you the rounds and um, help us learn me trade have, a bit. Have you found the transition from being a top amateur to, to turning professional? And I guess the following question to that is, you're competing at such a high level in the amateurs. The last thing you want to do, I, I suppose, to, to sort of, I guess it would hinder your progression is to drop down numerous levels H how are you feeling about being a professional and competing with better opposition i think that's why uh, my team are doing a good job with me and all the rest of the fighters on the stable because um they're putting in with like competitive competitive fights early on they're not just like throwing journeymen at where that they're going to shell up straight away do you know what i mean they um they're putting away in fights that uh, that we're going to actually learn something from and um I'm glad they're doing that, because uh, obviously boxing at a high level all over the world, like you say yourself, you don't want to come down too many levels. Um, but yeah, like I say, Matt Truma, um, give them all the opportunities and uh, help them with propel with career. Yeah, he's, uh, he, he can be a handful, not afraid of causing a, an upset. Ellison beat uh, another unbeaten North East prospect in Anthony Ornsby not too long ago, went to, to Liverpool and beat Masha Dodd too, so you know you've got to be on your game. First up, um, on the zone, just finally a word on, on the main man, Cyrus Patterson, a long-time friend of yours. Um, is he going to do the business, do you think, on Saturday? I definitely am confident in Cyrus. Uh, he's been looking good in training camp, looking sharp. Um, like, you see, like he always says, uh, opportunity presents itself when he's ready to receive it, and I think he's, uh, he's definitely ready to receive uh, them belts on Saturday night. Great stuff. Uh, Frenchie, thanks for, for talking to us. Very best of luck. Uh, Callum French and Jordan Ellison will be opening the show uh, over an eight-round lightweight contest, agreed £139 uh, live on the zone. Seven o'clock uh, Saturday night. Uh, Mark, thanks very much. Adam as well, thank you very much, gents. Cheers. was talking to, to Callum earlier. Yeah. And he was saying about the dream one day fight at St. James's Park. Can you imagine? I think I think a lot of them could probably fit on the same bill, couldn't they, there? Well, I, I, and I asked him that. I said, who's top of the bill and who's chief support? What did they say? <laughs> I think they said that it'd be a joint yeah. top of the bill. Four co-mains. <laughs> yeah. yeah, good. Uh, so we're going to be speaking to uh, that man on the, the screen there, Hopi Price, one of the top 122 prospects uh, in the UK at the moment, he's in against an experienced Frenchman in Thomas Masson from uh, Pas de Calais in France. And uh, Frank Smith joining us as well. Oh, it, mate. It's not often we get to have a sofa day. Frank, thanks very much, mate. Quite cosy, isn't it? I very like the good. new setup. I know it is. Um, just a, a word on May 6th. Obviously, Eddie's out there at the moment in Guadalajara. That is going to be. We went there a couple of years ago for one of the first. Uh, Canelo promoted events. It's going to be a logistical challenge, isn't it? 50,000 people in the stadium, but what an experience to do a Canelo fight night in his home country. Yeah, huge event. You know, another massive night for the schedule. Uh, Canelo Alvarez is a massive part of the, the zone and matchroom schedule, and an event in front of 50,000 people is going to be special. So we've let Eddie go out there to the sunshine. He's in, actually in San Diego now, and we're in Newcastle where there's nowhere I'd rather be. Although it's raining, it's much nicer than being in San Diego. Yeah, we know we're up north, don't we? Yeah, we certainly do. Um, so the British Super Bantamweight division is one that's uh, in, in transition at present. We've had some great talent in years gone by. Duke McKenzie, uh, of course, world champion in the early 90s. Scott Quigg and Carl Frampton, two of the more recent notable names on the list. There's nobody active currently at world level, um, but there are a number of very, very good prospects who are, are on the way up and have potential to get there. Shabazz Massoud, 
Lee McGregor, Dennis McCann, and I think most people would agree this young man here, Hopi Price, um, 23 years uh, old last week. Happy birthday, first of all. We saved the cake for Saturday. Um, nine and oh now, Hopi, you've boxed 47 rounds, and I was just having a look through the scorecards. You've won 46 of them. Uh, it's not good enough, mate, unfortunately. Um, I'm joking, obviously. You've, uh, a bit biased, though, that one. I love yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, You've made it look very, very easy to this point. Uh, you've looked untouchable uh, for large stretches of, of these first nine fights. And Dave Cole hasn't been shy of matching you tough either. Has it been as easy to you as it has looked to us at points? Uh, yeah, I'd say so. I don't think I've been fully tested yet. I believe I've boxed good opposition such a, like, for an early stage of my career. But never once in there have I felt like I'm finding it tough. You know, I've always been levels above the opposition I've been in with up to yet. Um, some of the names I mentioned, Masood and McGregor, there's a good chance that you guys will be in the chasing pack for, for world titles down the line. It's a long way off yet. Um, but when you look at the top two fighters in the world about to do battle in Fulton and Inoue for, for Undisputed, what does it make you feel like when you think about those big nights against genuinely dangerous world-level opposition, 12 rounds ahead of you, big crowds and world titles on the line? Does that, does that set the fire alight for you? Yeah, it excites you. you know, um I always watch a student at the game, so I'm always watching these big fights. And I don't sit and look at Fulton in any way. And I watch that fight like with interest. I always see it as how can I beat these guys because I believe it. I'll be there one day. So I've got to look in the lights of two, three years' time. These are the guys I'm going to be fighting, you know. So um, I always watch them and keep me on everyone around in my way. So um, I, like you say, I'm coming for the number one spot. So uh, I've got to look at the, the best in the world. It, it, it always seemed to me, and I think you'd agree with this, that the, the talent was always there, the boxing know-how, the boxing brain was always there, but it was always waiting for that physical strength, that man strength to come, and it's there now. It's, in your, it's evident in your performances. Chris talks about them big nights, and I don't want to jump the gun here too much, but I will. How far do you think you are from the big guys in the division, both domestically and world? Do you know, in, I'm confident in my own ability, and I believe like I'm, I'm not far away at all. But then I've still got to realise that I have only just turned 23, and I am only nine fights in. So um, that's why you say I've got my trainer and manager, Dave Caldwell. Thankfully, I've just signed a new deal with uh, Matchroom, Eddie Frank. So um, I'll leave that in their hands, you know. Whenever they're ready to let me go and let me fight whoever, I will fight anybody in the division, anybody at all. And you mentioned the strength there, which is clearly starting to, yeah. to come. You're obviously doing a lot of work with Danny Wilson from Boxing Science. He's one of the very best in sports uh, performance in the UK. Um, as an athlete, you, you know when you've had a good block of training in the ring and in the gym, but when you've had a good block of training in the weights room, you've hit your targets. Do you notice the crossover in your performance from, from the strength work you've been doing with Danny? Yeah, 100%. You know, it's very beneficial. I think one of the main parts was when I used to do it when I first turned pro, it was like, you'll do it for a bit stop do it again which now and like i never stopped training anyways but just being more consistent in there with me snc as well as in with the boxing so um i think it's it's added a lot to my game you know i feel a lot lot stronger and uh, a lot better and f frank I, I guess look it's no secret josh warrington slowly coming to the end of his career is it about building the next stars for Leeds, having that arena banged out, the potential stadium fights again, and you've got a good crop of fighters. Hope he's certainly one of them. Yeah, look, I think we've seen what Hope he can do with ticket sales in Leeds, um, even up here as well. You know, he sold a load of tickets. I think now the key is activity for Hope, he, keeping him busy over the next year, watching him build and develop, and then he'll be ready for those big fights. You know, as he says, he's 23 years old, it's not a rush. This is why these next-gen shows are important as well, because we have to build the stars of tomorrow. We've seen what we've done in Newcastle with Lewis Ritson, for example, and that's the opportunity we got with the likes of Cyrus Patterson, Pat McCormack, etc. And that's what we want to do with Hopi in Leeds, you know, back to Headingley as well. You know, it's a huge opportunity, and this is just the start for him. I know this um, part of your apprenticeship, Hopi, is, is speaking to Dave Colwell about um, you've obviously breezed through the domestic tests about trying to get you in against some former champions, guys maybe slightly past their, their prime, maybe a little bit smaller, but with the experience and, and the know-how that you haven't got at this point. And at that point, I'd like to welcome uh, Thomas Masson. Bonjour, Thomas. Uh, we're going to speak uh, through your translator, Phil. Um, you're 32 now. Thomas, you've been a professional since you were 19. It's a long time. 
Um, you've been European champion, you've fought for a world title. How much ambition do you still have left in, in this sport? Uh, il a dit que, uh, bienvenue, tout d'abord. Um, vous avez 32 deux ans maintenant. Vous avez déjà une carrière longue, beaucoup d'expérience. Vous avez fait un challenge pour uh, un titre, pour être couronné titre mondial, uh, champion européen. Um, tu as l'envie encore, tu as le désir, tu as l'envie de continuer avec toute cette expérience parce que c'est une longue carrière après tout. Hi. I'm sorry, I not speak English. It's all right. Alors, euh, oui, c'est vrai que comparé à mon adversaire, j'ai une longue carrière. Euh, j'ai eu plusieurs euh, expériences dans le monde de la boxe euh, à travers le, le championnat du monde WBC que j'ai pu faire. Forcément, ça, ça me ramène à avoir plus euh, d'expérience vis-à-vis euh, -vis de mon adversaire aujourd'hui, parce qu'il est assez jeune. Mais euh, je suis toujours dans la même motivation. Et, euh, ce combat m'a été proposé euh, il y a maintenant deux mois et j'ai la même motivation qu'auparavant. Qu Rien n'a changé. Uh, in terms of motivation, nothing's changed. You're right. In comparison with Hopi, I've had a long, long career. He's a lot younger than myself. Uh, but as soon as uh, this fight was proposed to me, was put to me, I didn't hesitate at all. As I say, I've still, you know, I've got lots and lots of experience. You touched on uh, the world title fight I had, the WBC crack at the world title. I've got experience. I've got experience all around the world. But as I say, you never lose that hunger, and I certainly haven't lost it. Um, you faced another southpaw counterpuncher with very fast hands in Alessio Larusso for the European title. Your pressure gave him problems later in that fight. You perhaps gave him a little bit too much space early. Do you need to start faster against this man? Donc, euh, il, il se réfère au combat contre Alessio Larousseau. Donc, euh, est-ce que tu penses que tu peux apprendre quelque chose de l'expérience de ce combat-là? Um, il est gaucher. Donc, euh, peut-être tu as donné un peu beaucoup trop d'espace au commencement, euh, au commencement du, du combat, mais vers la fin du, du combat, tu, tu avais des, des opportunités, euh, tu maîtrisais. Tu peux apprendre quelque chose de ce combat-là euh, Oui, c'est vrai que sur ce combat-là, euh, bon, c'était différent. J'avais euh, été euh, euh, dans une phase où j'ai eu aucune activité pendant plus d'un an. Donc, c'était un combat de rentrée. La ceinture en soi, on n'avait on, on pas le but pour la on n'allait pas le, au combat pour la ceinture, on y allait pour l'expérience. Euh, J'ai commencé le combat un peu tard, mais c'est vrai que j'aurais pu, euh, pu accélérer euh, dans le combat pour essayer de le gagner. Euh, mais l'objectif, c'était de prendre de l'expérience sur ce combat-là. You know what? Um you're not always going into fights to win a belt or to win a title. You know, you, I always feel that a fight, you gain something, you get experience. So I, I go into fights to pick up experience and to become a better fighter. Uh, it's true to say that I went into that fight, I'd had a year of inactivity, so I'd, I wasn't, I'd not been in the ring for such a long time, so maybe that explains what you were saying there at the start of the fight, but I felt that I really started to come into it towards the end of the fight, and I, I gave it a, a real good shot at, at trying to win it. But certainly, um, you know, you learn from those experiences, for sure. Merci, Thomas. Bonne chance. Uh, Hopi, thank you very much. I wonder if he does get close, we might see a little bit of your, uh, your inside game. I know Dave Cole has been working on uh, with you. Good luck to, to you both. Um, ten rounds scheduled. Um, how will Hopi Price cope with the pressure of an elite smaller man in Thomas Masson? That is second on the bill, live on the zone. Uh, Saturday night, a WBA Continental belt. He's on the line. Uh, a chance for the winner to move up their rankings. Gentlemen, if we could get you to the front of the stage with, with yourself uh, for the head-to-heads. -head. Thank you. No bad thing to see Hopi Price get some uh, some rounds in, Darren. Yeah, yeah. I think first and foremost because he's a he's a fantastic fighter, and you always like seeing guys that are as good as him in good fights. So yeah, the, the future is very bright for Hopi Price. Right, heavyweight action next. Fabio Wardley vacated the uh, English title when he became British champion last year. That title is up for grabs in our third fight of the night on. Saturday, take a deep breath because these two have had some words already.
Frank, obviously, you'll be security here as well. Lads, you can have a, an afternoon off. Yeah, he's been working out. I've been, I've been in good shape. Um, Solomon Dake is one of a, a small crop of up-and-coming heavyweights from the UK. Robert Ismay, 11-0, the home fighter. If we have a winner on Saturday, they will be uh, English champions. Sol, welcome. Um, I've still got a vivid memory of watching you for the first time in the WSB. I think it was your debut against Mihai Nistor um, in 2018. Nistor, for those of you, of course, who don't follow the amateurs, stopped Anthony Joshua, Otto Varlin, a bit Fraser Clark, um, Ergovic, um, a, a load of fighters um, inside the distance. Knowing very little about you at that point, I thought this could be a really rough night for, yeah, for yeah. this novice. You, you made it look easy, and, and actually, <coughs> even under pressure um, against guys like Bracamonte and Sokolowski, you always look like you have time on your hands. What do you think it is that you do in the ring um, that, that guys aren't expecting you to be as, as good and as competent at? Um, I think it's just boxing in IQ, you know, um, little things like distance control, controlling the range, little things, you know, everyone thinks heavyweights are going to just come forward swinging, you know, be as strong and as, as they can be and um, just keep waiting for. But, you know, I, got, I think I got a bit more finesse for the heavyweight division. Robert, uh, welcome to you. You've had a stop-start career through no fault of, of your own, a lot of hand surgeries between, I think it was 2013 and, and 2019. Boxing was calling you back though but unfortunately for you no sooner had you got back the pandemic struck so it's been far from ideal the, these last seven or eight years i'm sure but would that all be worth it if you were to, to walk away with this on saturday 100 percent, yeah that's what it's all about this is what i turn pro for i mean uh the only reason you haven't heard of us is because of that what i thought was a career ending hand injury the only reason you haven't heard of us winning British British titles, Commonwealth titles, is because of that. My my career was on the up, and do you know what? I would have snubbed my nose at that, and on the on the way up. But obviously, uh, I'm not now. I'm 35, uh, and we're, and we're having one last crack of the whip, and I intend to take it with both hands. Rob, you you made a a fair bit about the size of Seoul in this fight. Is it a case... As in what, Darren? Uh, I think you said in one of the interviews that some of the bigger guys in the division you probably couldn't uh, compete with because of the size. Because you're he not... He said naturally. I'm a bridge away. Apparently I'm a... But that, that's what I was about to say. So naturally... <laughs> put, the, put, put the mic closer. I can't hear you, son. Because, uh, oh, and you said right. naturally you're a cruiserweight. Do you not think Seoul's a big heavyweight? <laughs> Do you think he is? Well, I... I what, all I'll say is I see a photo the other day of you next to uh, Tyson Fury. Yeah. I didn't think there was much in height, really. Yep. But I'm guessing... There is, Darren. There is. I, what I was about to say is, is that make your approach to this fight quite an obvious one, then? Is it about getting on the chest of soul and trying to outwork him? And I'm not giving absolutely anything away about what I'm going to do. We all know what he's going to do. He's going to dance. He's going to run, isn't he? I ain't gonna run. I don't. Of course you're gonna. Well, if you if I'm you don't running in the training you camp, don't, if, you if you don't if you don't run if you don't run and you stand and meet me in the middle of the ring, there's only one outcome. You yeah, come I'm up second out. best. Are you <laughs> mad? You brought a good point up yesterday. How many pro, pro, pro fights have I had at heavyweight? Answer it. You've, how many? You've had three pro. Three. How many? How many? How many? How many you had as a pro? Five. Five. How many you stopped? Yeah, one. How many have I stopped? I don't know. Two out of the fucking yeah, three. Fought the most three diabolical heavyweights. Oh, well, so have you. You, you, you Bracamonte Bra 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 is a, a 22 stop. stone plotter. Yeah. Your sausage. He'd fucking beat you. No, I wouldn't. He would beat no, I wouldn't. <laughs> you, 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 you'll find out when I hit you on the button, kid. I you'll find out. I don't think you'll catch the button, mate. <sighs> yeah, listen, you don't know who you're stepping in the room, ring with, kid. You don't do. know. You haven't got a clue. Your team hasn't got a clue. Where do you think I came from? You see these, see Cyrus on the wall. by the look of see, it. See Pat on the wall. See Frenchy, see Mark. Yeah, I don't see, see you. I don't see you anywhere. <laughs> so, because <laughs> you're the matchroom fighter. So I came from the best amateur club in the country. And no one knows really? your name, so what happened there? I've just told you. No one knows your name because I've got, got a career. Got a load of I've got a career. Where's my excuses? You just, you just give them all. Oh, I can't. Uh, I'm not here because of this Robert, and that. Robert, We're here now. Is this you needing to, to try and get him emotional and draw him into to a conflict to centre him? Because that's your best chance of winning this fight. Say that again, sorry. Sorry, lads. I calmed down. Oh, <laughs> is, this, is this you needing to try and 
get a, an emotional response from him to try and get him to trade with you because you know that's your best way of winning on Saturday? Not necessarily. Because it's the only way to hit me because if I, if I jab and move and that, he won't, he won't hit me. If I stand in the middle of the ring, I'll beat the shit out of him. But well, that's his only chance to maybe touch me. Of course you will. But because uh, you don't know anything about like anything about us, I'm because you've done nothing. Because I'll cut the ring. You, you, you don't know anything about me. I'm a job pedigree. You got no I'm, amateur pedigree. I'm, you I haven't got one. You got a national title. No, no. Nah. You got no amateur pedigree then. But well, you're, because you're Mr. GB, I was picked. That's up amateur off pedigree. England before there was a GB squad. That's amateur pedigree, isn't it? Team GB. I, what, what, national title. That's you what still I've got. Box like one, what, you got club you still box like one. You still box like an amateur. Well, I box you like one and beat you. So what does that say about you? So, some of the two army have come out here. Yeah. <laughs> How are you feeling about fighting, yeah. fighting in front of them in the Lions then? I love it, you know, um, they've got the football flags. I mean, uh, football's got nothing to do with it, but it's good because... Um, guys, guys. There's nothing talk. better than, you know, the guys coming to support him, you know, they're, they're riling him up and everything. And it's just going to give me a bit more incentive to uh, put the performance on that I'm going to put on. You've... You've had a lot of good sparring. <laughs> so, uh, the last couple of years, you've, you've been to Morecambe several yeah. times with, with Parker and, and Fury, and I've been in with Big Joe Joyce, Johnny Fisher, Guido Vianello, Fraser Clark. I mean, these are, these are big, tough men. Yeah. That, that's proper, as as proper heavyweight fighters. Yeah. That's as good as preparation is, is going to get. I mean, how far away are you from, from those guys, in your honest opinion? I'm not far away. You know, I've, I've sparred you know, world champions, former world champions. You know, I've not been dusting around in the sport, I've been going around and. Um, Going with the, the top guys in the in the gyms and, and putting the work in and, and I know that I'm I'm not far off those guys at all. It's just um, a matter of getting more fights under my belt. And uh, you haven't been hit yet though, because that, that's that's because yeah. Listen, I, 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 I take nothing away from you because you, you, I don't want to get hit because I'll move. You're evasive and you and you, and you move. It's well. called defence. Yeah, of course. You'll be wise to have some on Saturday. Yeah, yeah, you, you've got a good, you, you're good you're defensively. Like, listen, listen, I've never... It's I hit you, you don't hit me. That's the aim of the I, game, isn't it? Of course. So... I never slagged you about that, but you haven't been hit yet. And when I... When trust I, me, I've been, I've been hit. The ring, I positioned you, I'm going to hit you. I've been hit by I'm the biggest guys in the body. division, mate. Plenty I of want what's far these guys, big boys. boys. You know, that what punches. 16 ounce goes and head goes. Tell you what, been tell, how, many, how many kids just stop in the amateurs? Because when I was an amateur, uh, you had to wear head guards. Exactly. Darren had to wear head guards, yeah. and I was wearing pillow 10 ounce gloves, and I was knocking them stone cold, unconscious. And I'm talking about forensic talking team about in the ring, 12 stone, forensic team 12 in the stone, ring, throwing a chalk line around them. 12 stone men. Well, I'll jump in there. What's then. your point? Rob, I'm going to ask you for a prediction. I'm going to knock him out, Darren. Similar as that. That's coming, that's staying here. That's staying in, in Newcastle. As so, old. yeah. <laughs> so, prediction? Um, I just think that's his best performance. He's sitting in that chair with a mic um, this week. So, we'll see if he can make the 10 round distance. Very, very. It's not going 10 rounds, kid. That's his only hope is that he can clip me early because he's going to be fucked after about three rounds. So, that's his only option. But oh. even if somehow, some way, he touches me with his best shot and it bounces off my chin and I hit you with a 10 punch combo, then you're going to think, oh shit. You've never threw a 10 punch combo in your career? Well, I'll throw one against you then, just to make sure. Oh, all right, well, great, because then you get an exchange with you come off second best, kid. Right, then. And then someone will come and draw a chalk line around you against your lifeless body. But while we're on that, because your team, because, because your team. No, no, no. Right. Calm down, boys. Robert. No, because your team, your team. Let him go, let him go. Let him carry on. No, no, your team, your team, your team, obviously. You obviously, what about them? obviously you're a good team. Because all they're going to be seeing is wakey week and while we're on that. <laughs> what's the best shopping? Thank you, Solomon. How much you pay for what's that? The best, what's the best, what's the best shopping? But you spent half your purse on that, didn't yeah? you? <laughs> <laughs> what's the best shopping? Wakey, Solomon. <laughs> what does that to do with yeah? what, what, what is it? Yeah? We'll try it. Get that down. Don't, open, don't open it. I'll sell that for a tenner. Don't yeah. know what it's going to do for me. And the rest, yeah. I wouldn't give it to a dog. Right, lads. Wait, how much you want to drink it? What would you get for that? Five hundred quid. Should we get, should we get the money? Yeah, one let's, grand. Let's, uh, Robert. Fucking sausage. I've got nothing to do with Prime. I don't know what he's on about. It's not my drink. Just broke the okay, TV. Okay, steady on. You've damaged the Prime. Uh, can we get you up the front, lads, for, for the head-to-head, -head, please? Come out, lads. Frank in the, in the middle. Good luck. Chris. 
So 10 rounds Saturday night for the English heavyweight title. Solomon Dakers and Robert Ismay. Somebody walks home with the belt. Third fight of the night live on the zone. Spicy. Wow. Well, a little taste of uh, what the noise is going to be like in there. And uh, there'll be plenty cheering this young man on one of, if not the best amateur. Darren, we were, we were talking this morning, followed this man for a long, long time, Pat McCormack. And just looking through his record in a little bit more granular detail, some of the names that he's beaten, the, the tournaments that he won from a junior all the way through to a senior. I know there's no Olympic gold medal there, world gold, but it's two silvers in made the two major championships in one of the most competitive divisions in world boxing. I, I think this young man might be the best amateur this country's ever produced. Couldn't argue with that. Um, well, it's awkward now because he can hear us talking, but yeah, very level-headed. The yeah. There's <laughs> all the talent in the world there, but what has impressed me with Pat is his, he's switched on and he understands that talent can only take you so far. Have you found the early journey so far, Pat? Yeah, as a professional, um, it's unbelievable. I've had uh, three fights, two first round stoppages. Got six rounds in my last fight. Um, another step up the ladder and uh, we're just gonna keep on stepping up the ladder. Ben Davison, um, the, the man in your, your corner. Obviously you're on that GB system, I think from about 2013, 14, a long, long time in the same system, the same environment, the same people. How has that transition been for you um, in, in the last year and a half? Yeah, the pros are a total different game. Obviously in the amateurs, only three rounds. You can win the first two and coast the last. You've, in the pros, you've got to be fit, you've got to be uh, ready. It's a 12 round fight, that's what we're going for, for the uh, title fights. And uh, it's a full different ball game, smaller gloves, it's a proper fight. People get hurt in this game, so you've got to do everything you can to uh, be the best you can be. Speaking to, to your team uh, and Lee Wiley, I mean, knows boxing as well as just about anybody. He thinks you're a genuinely special fighter uh, as well. Do you believe you can be this country's best hope of? in the next three or four years, going up and, and being one of the best welterweights on the planet, challenging some of the, the brilliant Americans on the world stage? Yeah, that's what we're going for, but we're just taking it one step at a time. I've only done seven rounds as a professional, um, total different game, and on Saturday, I've got a good, strong fighter. Um, he's, he took Troy Williamson 10 rounds, mm. um, so this is exactly what I need in this step of my career. He showed his toughness in that fight. Are you, do, do you look at that fight and think to myself, you know, I'd like to get him out there early, you know, and make a real statement. I guess in some respects, it's a win-win for you. If you do make a statement in that sense and you get him out there early, then great. But if you do get the rounds, it's also equally as good. To be honest, I'm not going to get people out there anymore. In my first couple of fights, I was wanting to get them out there as fast as I can. And then I bumped into an Argentinian who was just there to survive, wasn't there to win. I've never really had that in the amateurs. Even when you got on top of someone, they would never stop trying to win. So. It was a little bit different, but I'm going to go out there. I'm ready for a good hard eight rounds and uh, show me skills and show what I've been working on. Yeah, and a very tough man opposite you, uh, Dario Sochi from Rome. Welcome. I know you flew in yesterday. Um, you had... Uh, from Salerno. Yeah. Um, oh, thank you. And uh, you had a, a brilliant fight with Troy Williamson, another British fighter that they mentioned. He's big, he's physically strong, uh, and you went 10 hard rounds w with him. Pat McCormack is a very different fighter. What do you make of him? Yeah, as he said, uh, it's going to be a totally different fight. Williamson is physically really, really strong. It was a very tough fight against him. But Pat has a uh, great boxing IQ. He got skills. He's fast. But, you know, I will try to fight a very short distance from the beginning. Do you, do you believe you have too much experience at this level for him? I have a lot of experience as a pro, you know, amateur and Pro is a totally different uh, world, you know. I always remember Lomachenko against Salido. Lomachenko got two gold medal at the Olympic game, and Salido, you know, was the underdog. And then, you know, I go for the upset as well. Of course, I'm not Salido, but he's not Lomachenko. Mm. So, who knows? Interesting. Um, he's done 10 or 12 rounds on, I think, six or seven occasions now. Is this as, as much about trying to pace the, the fight as it is about getting him out of there? No, it's not about getting him out there. If it, if it comes, it comes. But um, I'm just going to go out there and show what I've been working on in the gym. Um, I think I'm on a different level to him. Um, and I'm going to show it on Saturday night. All right.
Frank, I was just about to say, it must be so exciting for Matram to be able to build uh, huge shows up in the northeast with this crop of talent coming through. Yeah, 100%. As I said earlier, the, the, some of the shows we used to do down here, well, up here, sorry, with Lewis Ritson, were some of the best nights I've ever seen. The atmosphere that was created. And that's why, you know, the lights of Pat were important for us to get. You know, we didn't get him the first time round, but when we got him eventually, we know the talent he is and we know what he can bring. He's in there with a hard opponent. You know, his first fight was, I think, frustrating for him, but I think he's going to show the levels on Saturday night. And uh, look, a huge future, as I said earlier, the next gen show is important for that. But we want to get back to that, selling out that arena like we did with Lewis Ritz, and, and we know it can be done. And this is a, you know, a real important market for us, and Pat's a huge part of those plans for years to come. All right, All right lads, uh, best of luck to you both. Dario, thank you, Pat, thank you, lads. Thank you. We can get you to the, to the front for the head-to-head, -head, please. Boxing on the Zone, presented by William Hill. Deliveroo presents Decision Time. You want everything, but what's it going to be this time? Pizza. Yes. I love you. Scrap that. Burger's in town. Come and dance, you delicious meaty beauty. Chicken. Go on, have a think bite. Rain down, you crisp. Oh. Tim's ordered noodles. Decision made. Order now. Deliveroo. Food, we get it. First major step up for uh, Newcastle, Cyrus Pattinson is in against the former British and Commonwealth champion, Chris Jenkins. So it's uh, Chris Jenkins at the open workout yesterday. Remember, Chris, good to see you. Thanks for coming up. Well, gents, the main event uh, on Saturday night in, uh, in Newcastle. Cyrus, uh, a homecoming for you. I'll, I'll never forget um, that week out in Samsung, the Olympic qualifier, when you w were sent ahead of Josh Kelly. I think he had a few issues outside of the ring. That, that main Olympic qualifier, of course, such a tough one because all the big names are in. And of the three that you fought, I think two were in the world's top 10. You beat two of those and you fell agonizingly short in what was and what would have been uh, an Olympic qualifier for, for you. Um, it's been a difficult six or seven years. You've really learned the value of, of patience and it's all built to your first big test on Saturday. Yeah, definitely. I mean, that's why I encourage a lot of the lads in the gym young lads, 22, 23, wanted to improve early. Uh, I think you need them kind of experiences of heartbreak, fighting with injuries, fighting when you're hurt, getting hurt, fighting multiple days, making the weight. Uh, they're all kind of amount of for when you turn professional and it's a hard game. So I think it all kind of seasons you and conditions you for, for what's to come. Yeah, the, I guess dealing with those tough moments in the amateurs must help you in this scenario because it, it, I guess it's kind of alien in a way, you know, only a handful of fights and now you're top of the bill in front of your adoring fans. I mean, do you feel a sense of pressure coming into this fight at all? Uh, it's more excitement, to be honest with you, like, because, I mean, I've, I told you about a post that I'd done four, I think it was about four years ago, uh, about sneaking in uh, ringside at the Metro and now I'm headlining it, so it's, uh, it's something that I've, I've always kind of pictured and visualised and I've been working hard and like I say, like I asked the universe for it and it served us. And this opportunity came about and I'm obviously ready to take it. So yeah, we are. A hard uh, journey in the amateurs for Cyrus. Um, Chris, welcome. Been watching you for, for years. You plied your trade on uh, Paul Boyce's shows in, in the early years in Wales. You got that opportunity at prize fighter on a match from Bill 2013, boxed brilliantly. And of course led to those undercards of Ricky Burns and Lee Selvin, of course your own opportunities been mixed for you I think mainly through no fault of your own cuts has been one of the big stories of your career you've been through more technical decisions than any fighter in recent memory but things have come good uh, in the end of course you became British and Commonwealth champion in in 2019 um, you too have done things the hard way you, you know the value of, of hard work and I can sense there's a, a real respect between the pair of you heading into Saturday um, yeah first of all you know I, my, my respect to Old Cyrus he's a good fighter and he thinks like ways of myself and when back then, I think I blew on the scene in 2013. So it's now 2022, 20, 23. So it's 10 years on the game. So 
you know, um, I'm just happy to get given another opportunity on such a great card in Newcastle. Um, it was such a good show. I do look a bit fat on the poster, though, compared to where I am now. Yeah, they need to take him a bit closer to fight, fight night, don't, don't they? Look yeah. at that, that looks shocking. I don't, it's all right, if I knew he was, he was wearing that, I'd have made, made it better. But he's always smart, it. yeah, he shows us. No, he yeah. turned up, I was like, how has he got on a date? <laughs> uh, no, you know, look, we're there to do a job on Saturday. I've had a good camp. Um, my team, Carly Lockett, now. Yes, I'm the older of the two. I'm well seasoned, so, you know, let's hopefully that can pay out in in the fight on Saturday. I asked um, Cyrus there about pressure, being at the top of the bill, and I'll ask you the question as well. Do you feel a, a sense, an element of pressure going into this fight, knowing that a defeat against Cyrus would, let's be honest, kind of be shattering to your career? No, mate, no one bit, you know. Um, I don't feel pressure. If anything, pressure makes me perform better. It's like with Cyrus now, they, he's headlining a show in his home city in front of his own fans. Everyone's going to say, is it going to go against him? No. It's going to boost him up a bit more. So I know what I've got to do. Obviously, if the, if the fight doesn't go my way, but it's an entertaining fight, you know, I know I'm in there for the big fight still. But I'm not... Well, I haven't been training my nicky nacky news off in the gym, losing a bit of weight, and get into top condition, ready to perform on Saturday and keep myself in that mix. I know you do your research on, on your opponents. I think you're the fourth southpaw he's fought. I know Mark, who fought you the first couple of rounds, orthodox. Um, but, but his record in those last four, beating Dongo, I actually thought he did easily enough to beat Tyron McKenna, and he was boxing rings around Mark, who, uh, until he got clicked with a very good shot in the fourth, but that's what, that's what happens. You know he's got plenty left, and you know you're going to have to be very good um, on, on Saturday. Did you feel uh, the, the Lissetto performance, it looked like things really came together for you in that fight and all the hard work? Is that the kind of performance you're going to need to beat this man on Saturday? Definitely. Uh, I mean, he's sure he's got a lot left in the tank. Like, he's, it's not been one-sided fight, fights that he's been in. He yeah. uh, showed that like could have swayed, could have went and got the decision against McKenna. He was beating Mark at one point, beat uh, Indongo, unified champion. So... You can't be on that slide that much if it was only six months ago, do you know what I mean, that you were fighting. So I know that's going to be a tough test and it's uh, definitely what I need in my career at this time. Um, and I think things did come together. We progressed every fight. I've kind of evolved as a fighter. I've grew into the professional kind of style of things. Me and Graham have been working very hard in the gym with Jake and Stevie. So I think it's coming together and we've built on last camp as well. So hopefully I'll see a lot of that on Saturday night. You must be over the moon with the investment and the energy that Matram are putting in the Northeast and the current crop now. L not, again, I, I can do this, but you can't, but looking past Saturday and all goes well and you get the win is the dream, not just to be fighting at the arena, but one day to be fighting at St. James's Park. St. James's Park's an amazing place, isn't it? Like, and obviously, a fight there one day would be like a dream come true, but like I say in every interview, like, this fight is the only fight that exists in my mind. Jenkins is the only opponent that exists in my mind. That WBA International is the only title that exists in my mind. I've never, ever looked past any opponent, uh, and that's what's served my career, like, and I continue to do so. And Chris, just quickly, I mean, for you, what are the dreams and the de desires still at this stage in your career? I mean, a win over Cyrus then puts you back up there. You know, you get that ranking belt. Is there still plenty of desire left in the tank for you to push on and try and capture a major title? That, that is my end goal, you know, I want to go out and high. Um, what drives me in this game is my children. You know, I've got three young boys and that's what drives me in the game. So if I can keep winning, um, they can say, Daddy's a champion, you know, so... You know, I've got to go get through Saturday and a tough fight with Cyrus and then hopefully we can move on to a few more fights before saying, no, ciao for now. I'll tell you what, they can be proud of you already, mate. That's for sure. Yeah, no, you've promised uh, you'll, you'll bring the belt home to your kids. I guess if things get tough on Saturday, that could be um, what, what starts to wheel you through those, those difficult patches and nothing there, no, nowhere you haven't been before. No, well, like, you know, the last fight I had against Tyrone McKenna, I got turned on war. You know, uh, obviously I got clipped by Marco. Stupid mistake. But, you know, it happens, but... 
they, they, they're gonna drive me on Saturday. I know I put the work in the gym, and I know he's put the work in the gym. So it's going to be an entertainment and entertaining fight for the fans. Is that the dream for Matram? Eventually, a St James's Park show. Yeah, it's what every fighter dreams of. It's what we want to deliver for, deliver for the fighters. You know, as Cyrus says, though, his eyes fully set on Saturday night. He's going in against Chris, who's had you know 32 fights. He's he's been in tough, tough fights in his last few against high-end opposition. So this is you have to respect Cyrus. He's a special fighter that he wants to take these challenges. But they're the kind of steps he needs to take if he wants to move through the sport at the pace he, you know, he, he's aiming to. Um, you know, Chris is coming to win the fight, as he said. But yeah, long term, that's the dream, St James's Park. You know, we've seen, as I keep going back to, those nights we had with Ritson at the arena were special. But can you imagine, I don't know, 60,000 in there? Would be, 50, well, uh, well, we'll, we'll get to it, we'll sneak yeah. 60 in. Uh, yeah, it would be a, a special, <laughs> special night. Park and the yeah, it'd be perfect. Uh, Frank, thank you very much. Chris. Cyrus, pleasure to see you both. All the best for, for Saturday. Thank you very Saturday much. Thank you. Uh, WBA ranking belt uh, on the line as well, live on the zone. Gents, we can get you to uh, the front of the stage for our final head to head. For those of you watching at home, thanks for joining us this afternoon. We will be, of course, uh, live at the weigh in uh, tomorrow at one o'clock. All of our undercar fighters will be hitting the scales and facing each other for the final time before Saturday night. We've got uh, four fights on before the bell. Muhammad Ali and Sean Jackson, Maisie Rose, Courtney, Bukra, El Kaisi, Adam Reichard, Yathias Fayor, Mark Dickinson and Ben Ridings before we go live at 7 o'clock for Callum French against Jordan Ellison, Hopi Price and Thomas Masson, Sol Dakers and Robert Ismate for the English heavyweight title. Expect fireworks there. Pat McCormack against a very tough man in Daria Sochi. And then Cyrus Pattinson and Chris Jenkins will do battle in our main event over 10 rounds. Plenty of respect between the pair of them. They will put that on hold Saturday night live on the zone from Newcastle. Uh, we look forward to seeing you then. Uh, and before then, of course, we'll see you at one o'clock for the weigh-in tomorrow. Thanks for your company, folks. Put my problems in the paper. Put my, put my problems, problems, paper. Now you look the deputy mad at my brown, brown, brown. One of the highest rated talents on the British scene right now. I'm getting older and I'm getting better. Long term <laughs> prospects from the North East. High quality fighter. Who really is a special talent? <laughs> there's very talented fighters and then there's Pat McCormack. Oh. Overmatched, outworked by Cyrus Pattinson. This is first time on your life. This is the first time he's been in the big occasion. This is why these next gen shows are so important. Oh my God.